Hello and uh, welcome to this interview. And I would like to start by asking you, could you please describe your organization and your project? Okay, thank you. Hello. Uh, we are at the National Institute for, of Anthropology and History in Mexico. It is the, the organization in charge of the research, uh, investig- uh, research, conservation, preservation. Also, we educate uh, in the um, subjects of our anthropology, history, and conservation. We are in charge of pre Columbian heritage, historic heritage and paleontological heritage. And I'm uh, representing to a um, community of game developers uh, called Mermelada de Juegos. Translated, it's like a game jam. <laughs> <laughs> and the project we, we put together, uh, we, we the, the main purpose of the project was to is to convey uh, what conservation is about and also to uh, raise awareness of the importance of conservation of uh, cultural heritage. That's our our main goal. And we wanted to address uh, this awareness to publics not usually uh, associated with uh, cultural, uh, as cultural consumers. We tried to reach a different audience. We, we, We started putting this together in 2018, but really rounded the project in 2019. So what the project is about is that we have an open call for participants to uh, come and join us in a game jam. A game jam is a a short uh, meeting where uh, uh, participants have to come up with a, a video game or a board game or a role game. And the the subject of the games, the the theme of the games, had to be in different years with different themes. First, we were focused on archaeological conservation, and we had a specific um, site. In this case, it was the Maya site of Palenque in Chiapas, the southern part of Mexico. And we were focused on preventive conservation. Then another year we did, uh, the pandemic came and we had to invent ourselves again (laughs) and we had to go online, uh, adjust and adapt to the methodologies and the platforms. Yeah, uh, uh, the game developers uh, have these um, game jams, these events for just like jazz sessions uh, of music to uh, unite and play. Uh, we as developers uh, make these game jams from time to time. And uh, this is why we um, find in in this institution an opportunity to take this theme of of conservation and preservation. And because when I was working in the Digital Culture Center from uh, from uh, Culture Secretariat from Mexico, we have an interest of preservation uh, in software and hardware. And it's this meeting was a a very nice uh, event. (laughs) Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, and we we worked in different things. We also uh, raised awareness of uh, risk preparedness. Mm-hmm. And risk management because we the next uh, game jam was focused on the on the um, metropolitan cathedral of Mexico City that had been damaged by the big big earthquakes from 2017, and then we had a, another game jam on paleontology and and there we focused on all the risk uh, prevention of uh, illicit trafficking. So we we try to focus to address different types of heritage and different problems. And the last year was uh, from uh, subaquatic um, uh, heritage. Uh, We participate with uh, uh, friends Mm -hmm. in uh, Ocean Hackathon. And this game, uh, Yem Chevna, was uh, the uh, The winner of the the Mexican edition. Uh, yeah, they went to 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 France as the finalist. Well, uh, with a bunch of finalists from each country, 
And uh, so it was uh, interesting that we, we participated there with a challenge. We presented the challenge of making a game addressing underwater and shipwreck uh, conservation uh, linked with the conservation of the oceans and the reefs. So that's what called the attention of the jury, the, the, theme, the themes that were uh, linked. Wonderful. And, and uh, yeah, it's interesting that you're here almost as a double winner um, and uh, because also you had the uh, IIC Keck Award uh, as well. And uh, would, do you think that was a similar uh, criterion for the judges that they really liked that connection or or was it other different kind of things that that worked for the other prize i think it's different because mm. ocean hackathon is more uh, scientific uh, project and this is more conservationist yes I, I i think well first of all they were like different uh, products that were uh, in in the contest in the Ocean Hackathon, we only presented a, a challenge and then the participants uh, came up with this game. Right. And in the, in the, the Keck Award, it was really funny because we, we were not going to participate. Uh, in the ENA, uh, I, we, we, were, we were constantly looking for funding because we have very uh, little budgets. And we, we found the Keck Award and then we said, oh, maybe we should, we should um, participate as, uh, with something. And I talked with, with our boss, the, the coordinator of, the, of the, the head of the national coordination. And she said, OK, you should go with the uh, prevention, the, the traffic prevention project. And then I read the, the, the call for paper, well, for, for projects. And I said, well, this is like a, a shoe for our foot. <laughs> the project, I said, our project is really what, what they are looking for, the, the, the game jam project. So we presented both. And then we were really gladly, happily surprised when we were uh, announced as, as winners. The criteria, I think uh, they told us when, when they announced the, the project, that there had been a change in the types of projects presented uh, in the past um, four years, maybe, that uh, usually projects presented to the Keck Award were more technical and they were about presenting the work of the conservator to the public in a museum or like that. And, and that the last years, and mostly with the pandemic, projects had changed and they were more uh, engaging with the public and uh, with a technological um, component. And, and so that's what they said. And they, they found that this project was very original in promoting the role of the conservator. That, that's what, what they said, original, fun, and that it really helped develop skills in the participants, in the gamers, in the, in the players of the games. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes. And I, I can really see how that, that would be the case. And um, so when you're creating the games, do you, do you have a audience in mind or does the audience come afterwards? Each team uh, selects the audience of their own games. Uh, but um, I, uh, re uh, thinking about it, Maybe the, the ages is uh, kind of 10 years to, to more. Why 10 years? Because you need to read in, in most of the, these games. You have uh, at least a minimum ability to read. That's the only difference to, to use to younger uh, persons. I, I would like to explain. Uh, we, we don't create the games. Mm. We do not create them. We, we the project is calling for anyone who is up to creating a game to to come with us and and join the game jam. So there's uh, mostly young people joining, and they are from the very different backgrounds. They can be gamers or game developers, but also anthropologists, but also um, artists, musicians, composers. Anyone can anyone. participate. And and then one of the main uh, purposes as as uh, game uh, for the game jammers uh, from from the technological point of view is that they make a networking and they are expected to form a team 
And then each team is expected to propose an idea and to develop a game and present a game at the end of the jam. So uh, we are we really have no um, uh, no no direction in what they come up to, and that's also something very interesting because they are kind of translators for us as uh, very technical people uh, uh, related to the conservation of heritage. We usually use uh, our specialized vocabulary. We have we, we and we are used to working by ourselves really. So that, that thing is very important. They help us translate for another audience and they present conservation from a different perspective. I think that's important. Uh, um, we used to guide uh, to the to the these teams with specialists and, and uh, people who um, make regular uh, meetings to check the project and the um, accuracy of the information. That's important for us too. Yeah. Yes, yes, we 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 have a, a, a two month span, I think, yeah. and in the they they in that those two months they begin with a, re, a recently formed team. They present their idea. And they are mentored by by conservation specialists or historians or paleontologists, depending on the theme. And also, they are mentored with uh, by by game developers. We we also something interesting with the pandemic was that we became more international <laughs> because yeah. the the face to face the first jam which was in person really was only for Mexicans and then there's a lot of participants that came from different parts of uh, Latin America Europe uh, the the second one was uh, involved six countries. And the third one was in nine or 11 countries. I don't remember. It's a, a lot of, of, of countries. Of international oh. participants, mm -hmm. 11. And then also, also we, we associated when we went online with Funda, which is an Argentinian foundation for uh, um, game, game development. Game uh, developing. Uh -huh. So we, we really grew in the pandemic in a way we did not expect. Amazing. And uh, yeah, that to have that additional reach that uh, you didn't anticipate is a, is is a, is a really interesting story. So, do you have any uh, follow up after the games are created? Do you evaluate their success or who they're reaching? Is is there a kind of after creation story? Panda. Uh, not really was the proposal. Uh, not formally. Uh, not formally. Not, yeah. was the propose of the of these events, but uh, we are tracking uh, a few teams. Uh, one of them, especially right now, have an uh, is developing another game, a new game called 1921. Uh, it's a, a, a interesting uh, Mexican period of time. And right now, in a festival of Cannes in France, they are presenting these video games in a new branch of this uh, films festival, uh, showing this uh, uh, cultural heritage video game. Yes, I, I think it's interesting to say that that we we did not plan this uh, uh, in in such a big outreach. We started with the first game jam. We, we were going to make only one, and then the the pandemic came, and it forced us to rethink ourselves and to round up the the project in a different way. But we did not get to the point of evaluation. It is important to say that we have done this with a, a, a voluntary work. Nobody gets paid one cent. And so it, it has all been a, a result of, of um, the willingness of people who participate. And there are sometimes there is money needed for special uh, parts of the project. So what we, we did, uh, make is uh, 2022 we devoted ourselves to disseminate the pro the project and all the games and we the institute is it is a national institute of, of, of a very large outreach so we used all the social media we we issued press bulletins and we also have participated in different congresses where we can show and and have people come and play when we have a special um uh, exhibition of the games for so that people can play them every time we have that we, we give them a 
um, questionnaire so to see how how they have come uh, after the, the their their notion of conservation, their notions of heritage, if they have changed after playing the game. So that in that way we can see it has some impact, the impact that we expected, but we really do not have. Uh, um, anything really documented as to say we have reached so many people and it has had so many such an impact but there are some indirect uh, indicators like this uh, participation in a, an important a, a festival of the importance of the Cannes film festival and and we have also seen that in, in, within the institute for example the, the national museum of anthropology which you may know is one of the most important museums in, in the world, they replicated our game jam and they came out with uh, different games and now they have just issued a new game with the Getty Conservation Institute. So we can see that uh, at least the methodology has uh, uh, and the idea of uh, uniting both uh, gamer uh, so, uh, community and, and the heritage and conservation community has produced something interesting. And uh, I have to add, uh, for the game developers community, it's an important project because they have the knowledge uh, about how is the real form to create video games or board games or, or role games. Uh, and they became uh, more formally to the industry. They formalized their formation, their formation for uh, the industry. They create their own studies or, or um, their own uh, ah. companies. Companies. They, they created their own business. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, the, the the impact is rippling out into all sorts of different different spheres. Yes. So yeah. Um, something, but sorry. So something about the Keke Award that they told us when, with the announcement was that. Uh, the Keck Award was usually issued by a jury, a closed jury, but this last past year they opened it to a public vote. vote. And, and uh, the public vote and the jury's uh, decision was fairly similar. So they also said that uh, each project also showed the outreach that they had gained in the amount of votes that everyone got. That's another indicator. <laughs> we still have to come up with how to really evaluate it. Yeah, uh, amazing. Thank you so much for exploring your uh, project with us. And uh, yeah, it, it sounds wonderful. I, I really look forward to seeing what comes next. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yes. you. So are we. <laughs> You're done. Thank you.